All right, so shoulders and shoulder pain. So if you have pain doing a Nears test like this, or pain doing a Hawkins test like that, or maybe just lifting your arm by the side, then you probably have some type of shoulder impingement syndrome going on in your shoulder. So today I'm gonna teach you the basics regarding anatomical structures in your shoulder, and also what you can do to help yourself. Welcome to Athletic Medicine. My name is Björn Hermansson and I am going to provide you with knowledge and information so you can help yourself building a powerful and pain-free body. Before we jump into the basics of how you're supposed to help yourself building powerful and pain-free shoulders, it's important to uh, distinguish if the pain is coming from your central nervous system or maybe from your neck. Because if that's the cause, then you need to address that first before you go and work with your shoulders. Without further ado, let's go. All right, so to begin with, I always try to look at the range of motion. So range of motion is the base of my pyramid, which I always work from and work around when I'm helping my athletes and my, my, my clients. So what that means that range of motion as a base means that you're supposed to have full range of motion or sufficient range of motion or specific range of motion sometimes for a certain sport or a certain activity. And when that is ad addressed and it's clear, then I always look at motor control. So after range of motion, I look at motor control. And motor control means how can you control the motion or the range of motion you have. Do you have poor control or do you have good precision and good control? And then when we have looked at motor control, I always look at power. So do you have power? Can you deliver power within the range of motion with good motor control in the uh, motion that you're aiming to do? And then last but not least, I look at skill, and that's the one I have on the top of my pyramid. But this is something that is more specific, so we're not going to go into it today. But that's my pyramid. So uh, range of motion, motor control, power, and skill on the top. Let's go into the specifics and the anatomical structure and knowledge that you should have about your shoulders to begin with. So let's bring Benji closer. All right, so when we now have Benji closer, I can teach you more about the anatomical uh, knowledge that I think is uh, basic for you to have to help yourself and have more knowledge on, on what, what you're supposed to do and what's impacting what in the shoulder. So I think we should start with the deeper muscles called the rotator cuff muscle, which, which are a, a group of muscles that sits deep into the shoulder blade and has its contact point to your humerus head. And it's four, muscle and four muscles, and the first one is called supraspinatus. And this muscle, it attaches in this groove here that you have on your shoulder blade. And then it runs out underneath this roof line here and attaches to your humerus head. And often when we have some type of impingement syndrome, it is this muscle or other muscles or bursitis or other structures actually that are underneath this uh, little roof line here, the, the uh, 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 acromion. And uh, so this muscle runs under here and then you also have the infraspinatus which attaches to your margo medialis, this portion here of your shoulder blade. And this one leaps out and holds on to the posterior part of your humerus here. It does more of a outer rotation but it's also really interesting because it's one of the strongest shoulder muscles that you have in your rotator cuff so oftenly actually when i have my patients and my my athletes if this is tired or not working sufficiently like it should if you if you work with this muscle and make it more rapid and more alert by manual medicine you can say um you have uh, often you have a pain-free shoulder by 10, 50, maybe 30% directly by just doing that. But that's not the solution. The solution is understanding the, the, not the sum of the parts, but the whole. So after infraspinatus, you have teres minor. It's a smaller muscle that attaches lower down on your scapula. 
and also to your, to your humerus head here. And least but not last, you have your uh, subscapularis with run, which runs in more into the inside of your scapula here and then leaps out and has its insertion points and contact points on your front side of your humerus head. So this one does more of the internal rotation, but, but as I told you before, this is not the, the, the most interesting part of it. What you should take home with you with, with, with this muscle group, this, the rotator cuff, is that it's uh, made to control the, the humerus head uh, so it's lying properly in the socket in all positions when you're training or when you're moving or when you're climbing or swimming or whatever you're doing with this awesome body. Um, uh, uh, that's the basics of the rotator cuff. And then if we put on more muscles outside here, you have the deltoid muscle which attaches on the back of the spina scapula here and also runs on the front of the clavicular bone here. And then from these parts, it it's, uh, leaps down and attaches to your uh, humerus a bit further down here, actually. So it, it's uh, helping with the stabilization by lifting your shoulder a little bit. You're, you're lifting your uh, humerus head a little bit. And then also it lifts your uh, humerus to the side. It does in a, a abduction, flexion and a bit of ex extension. And then least but not last, you have the... Uh, trapezius muscle which runs almost like a star from the back of your head out to your shoulder blade and down to the start of your lumbar spine down here. So this muscle is really important because this makes the shoulder blade move. So you have two uh, joints that are extremely important when understanding the shoulder and that is the glenohumeral joint which does that and then the rest of the motion is actually your thoracoscapular uh, joint, which is your shoulder blade moving out. And this is being moved by uh, these muscles primarily, the uh, trapezius, which I told you before here. All right, so with this knowledge that you have now regarding the shoulder anatomically, we can go back to the pyramid, which I already taught you. So the first thing that you should address is the range of motion, if you, rem you remember. So the range of motion, I think the, one of the best exercises that you can do actually to uh, load the shoulder and also work with your thoracoscapular motion or the range of motion it has, it is hanging. So you find somewhere in your uh, environment that you are when you are at work or when you're training. So the majority of time uh, uh, in your day, you find somewhere where you can hang. When this is looking better, when your range of motion is more sufficient and closer to what the potential of the shoulder blade is by hanging or other exercises, uh, we're going up to motor control. And motor control is, uh, is the uh, connection, actually, the connection between your brain and your body. So if I have poor motor control, it is sloppy and it may be fast movements instead of being able to have controlled movements. So one exercise, which is also a test for looking at scapular motor control level, is just lifting your arm like this, straight, and then trying to lift your shoulder blade without making faces or without moving your body in other types of ways. So only slowly and controlled as high as you can and then slowly, slowly lower your shoulder blade. Can show you from behind. So straight arm, lift your shoulder blade and then slowly, slowly, slowly go down. So this is a test and it's also a motor control exercise for your shoulder blade. So uh, ideally you should do these motor controls exercises. If you look at studies actually, they have seen that if you do it every second hour that you are awake on a whole day, you do five repetitions. Uh, and about five seconds per repetition. So that means that I'm lifting my shoulder, my arm, lifting it up slowly and then slowly down.
that, that's one repetition. You do five of these and the amount of time could be up to five seconds. And then you rest. And then two hours later, you do it again. So that's one motor control exercise that I think is great for you to do to control your, your shoulder blade. And then you have a motor control uh, exercise which is more aimed for the rotator cuff as I taught you about the anatomical structures before. And this one, uh, you should do it lying, but I'm gonna show you standing up here just for the convenience sake of it. So if you do it standing up, you're starting with your arm in a full inner rotation, not forced with your shoulder blade in a bad position. So shoulder blade in a neutral position like this, arm up to about 90 degrees, you can have it a little bit lower if you want to, and from here work with the range of motion and controlling your motor control. So what that is, is doing an outer rotation of the humerus. So what I'm doing now is doing it as slowly and as controlled as possible. And hopefully you can see I'm trying to locate my hand and my wrist because if, if it's moving rapidly or in a bad motion, you can see it hacking or lagging. So optimally, you would like to see it smooth and you would do it without hesitation or without pain and you feel in contact with the motion that you're trying to do. If you have pain and if you have bad control over it, you will feel uh, you will feel that you are not doing it smooth and you will see that it's not smooth in motion when you're doing it. So the same for this motor control exercises. You do it uh, every second hour uh, that you're awake and you do it for uh, one to two weeks. And everything of this depends on which level you are at. But when this is sufficient, we're going up and looking at power. So, All right, so when looking at power, uh, I think one good thing is to try to uh, have a conjunction between motor control and power. And one exercise for that is, as I call it on Swedish, peklek, and that in English is point play. And the exercise, I will cut in here so you can see it, but the exercise is uh, you're down on, uh, on, the, on the floor and you're pointing at one single point on the floor and putting your hand on it and then trying to push as much of your body over that point almost to the level of you standing on one hand if you're powerful enough. So that is one of the, the exercises where I try to combine uh, motor control and power together. And then when I'm totally in power and working with just power, when I have sufficient of range of motion, good motor control and only power is what is the aim to start to, to keep on building on my pyramid. Uh, I do things that I like to do or that is convenient for me to do in everyday activities or every weekly activities. And right now for me, it's uh, uh, strength training. So, so uh, exercises where you use your shoulder blade in as many motions and angle as possible. So that could be uh, bench presses, shoulder presses, rows, pull downs, different type of heavy exercises where you are uh, trying to push and load your joint and your muscles. Because if you have the pyramid stable before, if you have range of motion, motor control, these all uh, parts will be uh, nurtured and given energy and given uh, functioning and sustain their function if you train them. So another thing that is important to know and to, to think is, uh, is what I used to say is, uh, if you don't use it, you will lose it. All right. So keep holding this pyramid alive by doing something that you love to do with your body. If it's swimming, if it's climbing, if it's something that hopefully uh, is uh, engaging as much range of motion in your shoulders and with a uh, power load. All right, boys and girls. I hope that you have uh, gained more knowledge regarding your shoulders and this has been helpful. 
So if you enjoyed it, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so uh, we can meet in the next movie where I show you more about your own body and what you can do to help yourself building a powerful and, and uh, pain-free body. Cheers, bye.